as a dentist, you're going to have an opportunity to do several different types of suturing. The most common, of course, is the simple interrupted suture. We want to come in on a right angle to the gingiva, going through both sides about equidistant. And one of the most difficult things for students to learn is how to handle the excess suture material. Uh, there's a procedure which we call palming, which involves taking the needle by the back end, pulling it through the tissue with your little finger across uh, your hand like this, and picking that free end up between your thumb and forefinger till you get to the right length that you need. Then, for the first pass, you want to make two loops. The second pass, I go one loop. And the third pass, also one loop. The two loops are done simply to keep it from unraveling while well, it's in the mouth. So that's the simple interrupted suture. You're also, when you're doing a, uh, an entire quadrant, going to want to run your suture. And there are different types of running sutures. The easiest and probably least used is a baseball stitch. And that looks like this. A simple suture is placed. And then it's just a simple matter of Of running the suture like a so that it looks like a baseball stitch comes through it goes on an angle initially and come back so that the next suture is even with the one that was just placed and then you advance the, the next stitch Like that. We get to your final suture and wrap it once. Grab the loop in the center, lift up on it and clamp. Make a square knot and you're done. The best suture when you're trying to suture, uh, for instance, a quadrant of alveoloplasty is the continuous locking suture. This is done. You make a simple, you can watch me palm this. Grab it there, let loose, pull it through. Now I've got control of my suture. And tie this. Now you're not going to be on one side.
The locking suture is like having several interrupted sutures that are all tied together. So bring this through. Now you're going to take the loop end and you're going to twist it. And you're going to put the needle back through the back side of that loop, like that. And then you're going to pull it down. You can see how that twists as it comes down. That way it won't unravel while you're tying your, or passing your next uh, suture. Go through, pick this up, twist it, go through the back end, slide that down, it locks and holds in place. And so forth until you come to the end of your suit of your uh, incision, then you tie it just the same way you did the other one. You pull this through so that you've got about an inch or so of loop there. A single tie on your suture. That the reason for doing just a single with this is that if you double tie it, it's hard to push the knot down. It'll crumple up on you, makes it hard. So do it like that. This does just the opposite. It makes it so that it comes apart. But basically, that is the continuous locking suture. Then there's the Continue just a continuous non locking suture. <clears throat> Tie that, cut the short end. And this is exactly the same as the locking, except that you don't lock it. So instead of twisting it, you just push it back through straight. And you can see the difference as this comes down, it doesn't snug up on itself. The problem with this is once you let off your tension and you go to pass your next suture it will sometimes unravel. We don't have that problem on our suture boards so much but you can see that it is starting to unravel. The only advantage to this is that it might be a little bit simpler to and quicker to run these that way. But my preference is to always lock them. And then the tie is the same. Go back through, loop to the top part of the of your loop, clamp, pull together and finish. So there you have three types of continuous sutures, a baseball suture, a continuous locking suture, and a continuous unlocked suture.